Hey guys, what's up? It's Felix. Today I am going to tour you guys around the quantum of the seas. We're going to do the bottom few decks and stateroom first. And then part two will be the upper decks, which is going to be good. And be sure to check out the Asia Trip vlogs as well to see how this adventure has been going. It's been quite exceptional. You'll find out what I mean by that if you watch those videos. So we're gonna start at deck three. Deck three is a pretty small deck. Here we have two of the restaurants, two of the four restaurants that you can go to during the night. Cheek is a casual restaurant that serves meals and grand restaurant is the formal restaurant where every night is formal so you can select between the four different restaurants here which i will show you the other two on deck four over here we have the casino royale I'm not allowed to film in that but there you go forward of the ship you will find the music hall this is where live performances are and comedians will perform. Also on deck three, you will find your basic interior and ocean views. Starting from the forward of deck four is the Royal Theater. Can't show you in it right now because it is currently closed, but this is where shows will be held during the length of your cruise. Now on the port side of this fourth floor, there are many upscale stores here, especially for women and makeup. Here's a look at what the music hall looks like. This is from the deck four area. And just down there, where we were earlier is a deck three area of the music hall, which is a pretty nice place to grab a drink, watch some performances. Over here features Michael's Genuine Pub, which is a restaurant you have to pay a fee for. It has pub style food, like you would find in an Irish pub and a lot of drink options as well. It's a nice place to sit down with your friends, talk and enjoy simple and delicious food. Sorrento's is a place where many people will spend a lot of time. This is the primary pizzeria on the ship and it has delicious food. Pizza, pasta, great place for some Italian stuff. Right next to Sorrento's you will find the Cafe Promenade. This is open for most of the day, 21 hours in fact, and as you can see, it offers sandwiches, coffee, and all that good stuff. So if you're looking for a quick snack or a late night meal, this is the place to be. And heading over to the other side is La Pastoria, which serves Starbucks. And I believe fair pastries, ice cream, and coffee that you have to pay for. In the Royal Esplanade, you will find many stores selling watches, purses, and fancy perfumes and jewelry. Fort Merchants is the primary store for everything you want that is related to the ship. Looking inside, you will see a lot of merchandise that is Royal Caribbean related and has to do with this cruise. 
Bolero's is another very nice venue for live performances and getting a small snack or drink. On the other side of the vessel is guest services, a place where I have not had the best experience on this cruise. And finally, towards the back of the ship are the two other main dining rooms. On the right side, there are Silk, which serves Asian cuisine, and on the left side is American Icon Grill, which serves up classic American food like steaks. But 70% of the food in all four main dining rooms is very similar, while the other 30% is respective to what each one is categorized as. Deck 5 is the Royal Promenade, and here there is a walkway on the exterior of the ship, which you can walk around. There are small seating areas, but much of the area is obstructed with lifeboat views. This is the Via, which is also outside on the Royal Promenade. Here, there's access to many shops that have outdoor seating, such as Jamie's Italian. Over in the back, we have 270, which is one of my favorite parts of the ship. There are game shows, and sometimes, if you're lucky, the windows will turn into a beautiful display. It is a great lounging area and also good to see special performances. We're now on deck 6, which here we have 270 again. There's obviously a Japanese click on the other side. And here, hidden, is the library. This was very hard for me to find because you have to enter through 270 and that's a very loud and noisy environment. Libraries here, there is a good selection of books, but over half of them are like in Chinese, so I can't read them. I know, I'm a disappointment to Asian culture. Sudoku, trivia, and some Macs here, I believe for using the internet. Probably have to pay for that. And that's the library to so get another view of 270 with this upstairs seating area. And this is a very nice little staircase area where you can get great views of the ocean through these windows. The cafe at 270 is also a very nice place. You can get different types of foods here. And it is especially good for fruits because they provide you with bananas and kiwis, which are very hard to get your hands on anywhere else in the ship. Close to 270, there's also the art gallery, which no one really cares about. This area is vintages. It is a wine place where there is great options. And it is also just a nice place to lounge as well. This ship does a great job of having public areas where you can just enjoy yourself in a nice comfy chair. Jamie's Italian is also Italian, like Sorrento's, but unlike Sorrento's, it does cost money to get into this restaurant. It provides upscale Italian food. Japanese pharmacy, because you need one of those on every ship. And here is Wonderland, which is known as imaginative cuisine. This is another extra charge restaurant that provides you with futuristic and imaginative dishes. Observations. 
it looks very fancy. They have these sets of iPads, which you can use to reserve your shore excursions and dining plans as well as onboard activities that cost extra fare. But the problem is that the iPads don't work. Watch the Asia trip vlogs if you want to learn about what happened. And I hope you enjoy my rant there if you decide to go. Famous features, the Bionic Bar. Here you can choose your cocktails which you can make from this great variety of different drinks. The Bionic Bar also features two large robot arms which shake up and mix your drinks and then give them to you on these conveyor belts. Beware though, these drinks are expensive but they are quite tasty concoctions. large restaurant on this ship, but it is not the most expensive fare. It offers sushi and a variety of other different Japanese dishes, as you might be able to see from here. Lounge area where you can come, especially in the late night times. There are often live performances here as well. Photo gallery, which features very high tech screens where you scan, you scan your card here. But obviously, since all technology is broken on this ship, the service is not available at the moment. So it's a good concept, but the problem is that it doesn't work. So yay. Which is a staple on every Royal Caribbean ship. There is a cover fee for this restaurant, which you have to pay. And if you want the special dishes, you have to pay even more on top of that cover fee which is pretty ridiculous if you ask me. But it offers steaks, lobster, and just classic American dishes. The rest of deck six through 13 are primarily dominated by staterooms. And I'll show you around my interior stateroom right now. So I'm looking to a suite right there. These are the ones in the app. So this is a quick look at the interior. bathroom in here. Loads of storage space. Couch. TV. You've got your virtual balcony, which is dark outside right now because it is night. And two single beds, so not too bad. Thanks for watching, and be sure to be on the lookout for part two.